Hi, my name is Nate Place and I work in the Commercial Solutions Division here at 3M in St. Paul, Minnesota. And I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about unique uh, finishing characteristics uh, that you might want to consider when you are wrapping with the 780MC product. Um, the primary difference between the 780MC product and some of the standard wrap films is de film density. Uh, the very nature of reflectives, uh, it's a very layered film and it tends to get very thick, um, typically somewhere in the neighborhood with, with an overlaminate of eight to nine mils thick, whereas a standard wrap film with overlaminate is probably gonna be somewhere in the 3.5 to four mil range. So when you think about it, in terms of density, if you look at these two, you know, these two illustrations, you kind of get the idea uh, what you're dealing with in terms of fil film density from the 780 reflective versus a standard wrap film. Now historically, um, when we've been talking about cutting and finishing things like jams and uh, uh, rocker panels and wheel tubs and things like that, um, we've, we've kind of followed a, a rule of thumb uh, that we may want to alter slightly when we're using the 780 MC film. Uh, historically, especially in a color change realm, uh, we've taught that on the 180 degree side, which is usually the, uh, the trailing edge, of like a door. Um, we've always taught that you want to hold your knife blade at a positive 45 degree angle when you come down that jam to make that cut because that leaves just enough of the film in place to cover the turn on the 180 so that when you're looking at that 180 from the downstream side you get full paint coverage and you don't have any exposure of the paint. You get more of a paint like look with the color change. With the digitally printed or digitally or screen printed um, the graphic, you cutting at a 90, 90 degree on that 180 side is probably acceptable as well. But you're still somewhere in this 3.5 to 4 mil range. Now, with the thickness of the, or the, the 780 film being 9 mils, I'm going to suggest that we take our cutting and we rethink it. And here's why. If you think about the thickness or the density of the standard film versus the 780 film, you've got 3.5 mils versus 9 mils. If we teach our typical positive 45 degree angle cut, okay, with the 780 film, what you end up with is you end up with a very large lip of overhang, overhanging film. With the standard 3.5 mil, if you take that same positive 45 degree angle, you have, because of the minimal thickness of the film, you have uh, far less of a chance of things grabbing that film on the turn. Think about it this way. Think about my thumb grabbing this thick edge of that film that was fillet cut at a positive 45. You can get a hold of this, this material on the turn and actually start creating some lifting simply by fr with friction. With the thinner film, that doesn't have a tendency to happen because there just isn't enough of the, uh, a lip there. Okay, so to eliminate the possibility with the 780 film of having that scenario where you can actually get that material to lift by getting a hold of that hard edge, I'm going to suggest that we change our cutting technique on the jams to a negative 45 degree angle. If you think about a negative 45 degree angle here, what you're actually going to be doing is you're going to be creating a bevel on the 780 film that's going to run in the opposite direction of the turn. Now what you're going to have to remember with this reflective film is it's not paint or color change film, it's reflective, okay? And inherently, reflective is going to behave differently than standard wrap film, so you might as well understand that at the outset here, that there are going to be behavioral differences between standard wrapping films, digital medias, and reflective films, just because of the density and the thickness that's required to build the retroreflective mechanics into that material. So, my suggestion on the jam, on the, 180, on the 180 side, is going to be to change your knife trajectory from a positive 45, which is typical, to a negative 45, because of the density and the thickness of the material, creating a bevel in the opposite direction, which is gonna eliminate the possibility for anything grabbing the high side of that turn, okay? Now, if you really wanna play the safe card in the 780 world, you may want to consider doing a double negative 45, both on the 180 turn and the 90 turn, 
to ensure that you have no possibility, downstream possibility, of this film that's been wrapped over the edge from lifting, okay? As part of this whole process, I'm gonna suggest that we use Primer 94 on any door jam or any edge, any edge that's been cut, okay? All right, so in the case of this HHR, no, no laughing. I drew that fairly quickly. All right, we have a door jam cut that we need to consider. All right, so we're gonna make that cut and we're gonna make it using the standard fillet on the 180, tuck on the 90. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you get primer 94 placement on the turn on the 90 degree side for adhesion promotion. And you should probably also consider applying some primer 94 to the 180 side to help lock down that, yeah, that fillet edge, okay? In the case of the, the double negative 45, same thing. I'm gonna suggest that you put some primer 94 on the 180 side and along the 90 side just to lock down that edge, okay? Now, so that kind of takes care of uh, jam cutting. So other things that we need to consider, we need to consider rocker panels, we need to consider bumples, bumpers, and we need to consider wheel tubs. In the case of the, the rockers, bumpers, and wheel tubs, I'm gonna suggest that you start looking at utilizing the 3M knifeless. Okay, we've spoken a little bit about door jam finishing and cutting um, and primer placement and things of that nature. Along the same vein, uh, cutting wise, I wanna to touch on one pretty important subject. Because of the density of this film, and typically, I like to teach this with any film, I wanna talk a little bit about finishing your corners your door corners, your, your, uh, your lid corners, things of that nature. Um, because, because you have a tendency to collect and build bulk material on a corner, if you just simply, you know, if you simply fold over uh, on each side approaching that corner, you typically end up with a, uh, a wrinkle or excess film on the corner. And when you fold that material down over the corner, you end up with that stereotypical finger of material. All right. It's going to be ultra important with this thicker material that you take and get rid of excess media at that corner. You want to cut your corner at a 45 degree angle. The green represents your film, the purple represents your lid or your door corner. You just want to make sure that you're cutting the excess film. You know, if we were to draw this, your film typically would be something like this, okay? And if we were to just simply start moving that material over around that corner, this excess material is going to create a wrinkle. Because of the thickness of the 780 at nine mils, it's only going to magnify the problem. So what we wanna to do to eliminate any problem with corner failures, we wanna cut that corner, that film off at a 45 degree angle. So that when you're folding this material down and over on, on the back side of these, these corners, you don't have any of that excess bulk material gathering up on the corner and it finishes nice and flat. Okay, so that's a little more about cutting. Now I want to talk a little bit about finishing off the lower portion of the vehicle. In the Midwest, we have uh, salt spray, salt sand, harsh, harsh environments. Anything we can do to lock down the bottom side of this wrap application with the 780, anything that we can do is gonna be a benefit. So I'm gonna to try to ask you, or I'm gonna ask you to try to fortify your application by doing two things. The first thing is this. I want you to try to start utilizing 3M's knifeless product for making these long cuts along the rocker panels, in the door wheel tubs, and on the bottom side of your bumpers, okay? And uh, because the 780 is so much thicker than a standard film, don't try, don't try to reach the nether regions of these bumpers with the film because you're just gonna put too much strain on there. Think about stopping just below bottom center out of sight to make your cut, okay? Just so that you can't see it when you're on your feet and you can't see underneath that, that rocker or that bumper or whatever it might be. All right, so your strategy is gonna be this. You're gonna utilize a knifeless tape before you start your application, okay? You're gonna run that knifeless tape on that rocker panel. If this, if this, uh, if this were the turn side of the vehicle, the turn, bottom of the rocker panel, typically people have a tendency to want to try to get their, their film coverage all the way to the edge. I'm going to suggest 
with the 780 product that this is this is 780 my 780 whiteboard by the way okay bring your film just below bottom center and stop okay all right now what I typically see happen is when people are making the turn on the bottoms of their bumpers and rockers down in this area the material starting to get a, a, get under a, a lot of tension and you see a lot of wrinkling and puckering and, and things like that down here on the bottom um, we want to make sure that, that that cut is as clean as possible okay and the best way to do that is to utilize 3M's and Nyquist product and what you're going to do is this you're going to run your knifeless tape about in this area right here okay and to fortify that application even further to ensure that it stays I'm going to suggest that you run primer 94 along the edge of the knifeless tape which would be in this depiction right here what you don't want to do is you don't want to get bleed over too much bleed over of your primer 94 onto the filament carrier of the knifeless because you don't want that that spent side of your knifeless to get stuck to the reflective material because you're gonna have to pull that out from underneath okay so what we're trying to do is we're trying to be be able to lock down the edge the cut edge of that material okay but we don't want to run the primer 94 over and onto the knifeless tape because it'll make it much more difficult to get that spent filament side out from underneath the film. So try to keep try to keep your uh, your primer 94 bead just along the edge of the knifeless, but not on top of it. Okay, all right. So you're going to do that. You're going to do that along the rocker. You're going to do it in the wheel tub, and you're going to do it on the bottom side of the bumpers. So you're going to run your knifeless, and you're going to run a a bead a primer 94 along your knifeless along here under your wheel tub, and again, on the bottom side of your bumpers, okay? Again, your primer, your primer path is gonna be along, but not, not on the knifeless tape. And when you're finished, you're gonna have a nice clean cut, okay? You're not gonna be cutting into the paint, you're not gonna be cutting on the vehicle. The, the knifeless tape gives you a nice straight edge to follow with your primer 94, because you know that that's where your finished edge of your graphics gonna ultimately be. So, uh, it's only gonna fortify and help sustain that wrap longer, especially in harsh environments like we have in the Midwest. Um, I guess that's probably all I have right now in terms of, of cutting and finishing. Um, thank you for watching.